I had a lot of questions when I first started getting into combi boilers and this manifold here was the root of a lot of my questions. Common sense told me that with a manifold like this, uh, you know, here's your hot water coming out of the boiler here. Here's your return water coming back up into the boiler here to get reheated. Um, common sense told me with an open manifold like this with no valves in it, the water's just gonna wanna keep going. I mean, what would make the water divert up this way through all the restrictions of the heat exchanger and then back down this way to move into the piping system rather than back this way or what have you. Um, so it was really confusing to me and it didn't make sense. So if you're like me and you have a lot of these same questions, today I have answers for you. I'm gonna start with an analogy that's easy for anyone to understand. Let's begin with two pots of water, one large and one small on a stovetop. If I were to turn the flame high on both of these pots of water, you would probably guess correctly that the smaller pot is going to boil much faster. This is because we're putting more heat into a smaller volume of water. Now, if I were to put an Olympic sized swimming pool over this burner, it would never boil because it's just way too much water and not enough heat. But if I were to sprinkle some water on a hot frying pan, that water would boil almost instantly. So what's changing here? It's not the flame, it's the volume of water. So a combi boiler doesn't have a large storage tank for water to sit there and heat up. It all has this heat exchanger right here. And we're basically what we're talking about is just a quick pass of water through the heat exchanger and back out. So what we have here is something similar to an algae. We have um, a steady flame, but the amount of water that's passing through this heat exchanger is going to determine how much heat that water can absorb from that flame. So down here we have a circulator pump, the internal circulator pump on the combi boiler, and these are designed to move about only five or six gallons per minute. Now, if we were to try to move, say, 20 gallons a minute through this heat exchanger here, we would have the same problem is like our Olympic swimming pool on top of a small flame. There's just too much water, not enough heat, um, and the water won't absorb enough heat. Whereas if we move too little water, it'll be like our frying pan. We're gonna turn the water into steam and it's just gonna be way too much. So this pump is designed to regulate just the right amount of water through this heat exchanger to absorb heat at the proper rate. So even though five or six gallons per minute is the perfect flow rate through this heat exchanger to impart a lot of heat into that water, five or six gallons a minute moving through the entire piping system of the house and all the baseboard heaters just isn't enough in most cases to deliver enough heat to heat up the house. Now a conventional hydronic boiler has a circulator pump on it that's usually gonna move at the rate of about 20 gallons per minute. But we can't move 20 gallons per minute through this heat exchanger here. So we need some kind of uh, way to move the heat from five or six gallons a minute up to 20 gallons a minute. And that is where our manifold comes into play. So going back to the beginning with this manifold here, what we basically have is called a hydronic separator. You're going to hear it referred to a lot of times as closely spaced T's because we got T here and a T here, and they're closely spaced. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. But here we have, what, what this basically does is it creates two separate loops that kind of come together in the same place. So you have a primary loop here where water can circulate and get reheated based on that five or six gallon per minute internal circulator pump, right? About five gallons per minute, let's say. And then you have your secondary loop, which um, an external pump will control and that will be the loop that goes up through all the baseboard, through the radiators, and back around again. So this loop, let's say, will be about 20 gallons per minute. This loop, the primary, will be five gallons a minute. So basically what's happening here is that this circulator pump is allowing water to get pulled in off of this 20 gallon per minute um, loop here, heat it up and inject it back in again. And whatever water volume cannot make it in there. So if we have 20 gallons a minute in this secondary loop, all right, and we only can move five gallons a minute through this primary loop here, what's going to happen is about 15 gallons a minute is going to be flowing through straight through, like I suggested, but five gallons is gonna be pulled off, reheated and sent back in again. So eventually as this loop continues to go around and around, it's gonna start heating up more and more and eventually it gets up to the BTUs that we actually need to deliver to the home to heat the home up. Now this is an arrangement you are gonna see a lot on multi-zoned systems. Um, 
it is possible to do it without this arrangement and just go on the internal circulator pump. But in most cases, we're talking about a very small heat load, a single zone system. And even then you actually have to calculate and design it. You can't just, uh, you know, just do it willy nilly and expect it to work. It has to be kind of engineered to work that way. But most of the times you're going to see this. Um, and that is basically the reason that is the purpose for this whole thing. Now, as for the rest of the piping on a combi boiler, it's very similar to your standard hydronic boiler. Um, this is our closely spaced T's here, uh, right? So we got our T here and our T here spaced closely together. All right, here we have our makeup water coming in. All right, and it's going to go up into an air separator. So we're going to have an air scoop or a spiral vent or something. And the reason why is because this makeup water, the city water, has little micro bubbles of air in it. And as this air builds up in this closed loop system, a lot of that air is going to get trapped up in these baseboard heaters and create cold spots. So we need a way to get that air out of the system. Now, near this air separator and this makeup water, we're going to find an expansion tank. So once again, this is a closed loop system. So there's nowhere for pressure changes to really go. When you have water heating up and cooling down, you're going to have expansion and contraction. When you have pumps and valves opening and closing or turning on and off, you're going to have pressure changes. So we need somewhere to absorb some of these pressure changes. And that is exactly what an expansion tank does. Now you can see this makeup water goes right into the supply here and this is the hot water being circulated and you're probably wondering well why would you want to inject cold water into this hot water supply once again this is a closed loop system so you shouldn't be losing much water at all um, the only water really going in is going to be equal to the amount of air coming out of that system so um, aside from things like venting and a little bit of evaporation the amount of water that's actually being injected into this piping is very very little it's probably not enough to change the temperature at all and here we have our circulator pumps or you may have zone valves we have our radiators here uh, we have different zones of course so here we have our return we have our closely spaced t or hydronic separator um, and say 15 gallons per minute gets recirculated straight through like we discussed earlier another five gallons gets pulled off heated through the heat exchanger and injected back out into the secondary loop here so this here is our primary loop this here is our secondary loop there and that's it. That's basically how combi boiler piping works.